All right, Warrior, it's a, it's a, it's an honor and a pleasure to have you back home. You're going to go into the, the county jail part of it uh, right now, right? Yes, well, definitely. So I'm going to go into, after I got hemmed up, and I the stabbing on my co-defendant creeps. I hit the county. Okay. Floor is yours. All right, so uh, I hit the county jail. Now, it's basically my first time because when I uh, bailed out on the shooting case, I was only there for a week and didn't get to really experience everything of how it all works. And uh, I had never hit the county before, so it was this was all going to be new to me. And uh, actually, this is all I've been kind of waiting for my whole life on growing up I used to just look forward to going to prison I know that sounds crazy but that's what I wanted growing up I wanted a gangbang I wanted to be from my hood and I knew that the next step of gangbanging was putting in work and eventually you're going to get caught most likely and you're going to go to prison and going to prison I'm going to earn my stripes and earn my tattoos and, and earn my respect that's what I thought I remember when I was a uh, for like 11, 12 years old, my dad told me, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, and I saw him, or what do you want to do when you grow up? I said, I want to go to prison. And he smacked me. He said, what the fuck you, what do you mean you want to go to prison? And I told him, well, yeah. He's like, what do you mean? I said, I'm going to, I'm going to go to prison when I get older. He said, what are you going to get out of prison? And I told him respect. And he just looked at me like I was crazy. Like, that's how brainwashed and consumed I was back then. But, uh, so I had always asked my cousins or my uncles, like, like, hey, how, how is it, you know, like, what do I expect? Or especially as I got older, when I hit like 16, 17, like, and I knew that when I was about to hurt, turn 18 was coming, like, I knew that eventually I was going to get caught doing the things I was doing and I was going to have to be ready for the county jail and prison. So I made sure I asked a lot of questions about the ins and outs of how everything worked and what's it like of just going in there and saying you're a homie and, and then the next step from there, I'm starting off as a South Sider and earning your way up and earning your stripes to become one day a Sudeño and, and, and to represent that suit. And uh, so I hit the county jail and they send me to uh, uh, one of the higher, the higher tanks, the higher, there's only, there's the last two tanks that you can go to or the high, the highest you can go is 15, 17. 17 is uh, like, uh, like the highest you can go. I mean, that's where the big dogs are. That's where whoever has running the show, whoever has the whole county jail, that's where he's housed at. And then right below it, 15, the cells in 15 are like all big high profile cases. If you're fighting a murder, attempted murder, or anything big, you're going to be there. So that's where I landed. And um, I remember my first celly that I walked into with, with uh, was Lungs from Lake Elsinore. And uh, we ended up being cellies for like nine months. But when I first got there, he uh, told me how it all, everything worked. And my first, Blaquero or the first Yavero at the time that had the pad right there was a Negro from Fontana, Negro from Southside Fontana. And uh, I remember the whole time I was there, I used to just juice him for as much information as I could on questions about prison and how to be a Sureño and just, just glorifying everything that he was feeding me. And I also told him off the, off the rip, like, hey, check this out, I'm here for the cause and I want to be a Sureño. And, any work that needs to be put in, uh, uh, slide in my way. Any kind of dollars that need to be done, slide in my way. Like, I'm trying to do everything. And uh, remember, he used to tell me, like, slow down, little homie, slow down. Like, your time will come, you know? And, uh, but every time somebody needed to get the kind of dollar, I was in there. I'll do it. I'll do it. And uh, my, uh, the Blanquero Negro, I remember he had a big old bone on his shoulder, upper chest. And, I used to always tell him, like, man, I can't wait to get one of those. Like, what do I have to do to get one of those? And he used to tell me, like, well, you got you to gotta get a pegada under your belt. And you can only get one of these on a level three or four yards. Remember that. So I always told myself, I'm going to get one when I get older. When I get to prison, I'm going to get one. And uh, anyway, so while I was in the county, I experienced my first riot, racial riot. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I experienced my first racial riot with the blacks, like my first four months in, during child time, during dinner child. Um, so we had just got released from child, and Negro was walking by one of the blacks in cell, and it was some younger black kid that uh, didn't really understand the respect level of where he was, and 
he had told Negro, uh, oh man, watch out, you almost got drop kicked or something like that. And Negro looked at him like, what the fuck you just say to me? And he said, I said you almost got drop kicked, but he's saying it like he's joking around. And Negro fired on him. And I remember that moment, like, everything just slowed down. And I just looked around me like, oh shit, like this is this is the riot, you know, like the riot is popping off. And everybody just started getting off. And uh, I remember just getting off on the first black that I seen and everybody started picking up those hard trays that they gave us for dinner and smacking each other in the head and throwing them at each other and, and just everybody was chunking them. And uh, the way that the whole, uh, the whole setup is in the county, there's A pod, B, C, D, E, and F, and there's glass you could see into all the other pods and it was just a domino effect. All the other day rooms started jumping off and followed suit. And next thing you know, fool, the cops were running around like kicking with their heads cut off. They didn't know where to go or where to run because there was so much fighting going on. They didn't know which day room to go to first. And um, that riot lasted a long time. You know, it was just a county jail riot. That, it, it was, it was junk. And, uh, yeah, that was my very first racial riot with the blacks, you know. I loved it. I, I was, when I was in the county and I was fighting those two light cases, I didn't think I was ever coming home. So I thought that this was my life. This was what I was going to be and this is what I was going to do. And I was just turned the fuck up. I was turned up. And so I kept telling Negro, when the first holiday that comes, shoot him my way. Whether it's Megala, smash out, anything, I want to do it. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. After nine months of being there, finally somebody had fucked up and didn't want to, uh, just, he had this, he had fucked up. And, uh, Negro brought to my attention, he's like, hey man, I'll you keep asking me. Now it's your time to shine, it's go back to go. He's like, you want, you want, you and your study want to go on it? So my guys, my study, this real fool, go with me. And he's like, alright, so. He said, as soon as the door's racked, I need you guys to smash this wall and he was a couple of cells down for me. So, uh, as soon as the door's racked, me and my celly, uh, me and my celly were already ready. We fucking, uh, cause we don't get shoes in the county, we're just in touch. Uh, me and my celly took our socks off and we're barefoot and as soon as the door opened, we ran out there and our boxers tied up, just, just in our boxers and barefoot, ran out there and smashed this fool and, uh, kept going until they started shooting us with the paintball guns. In the county, they got the paintball guns. So they started throwing the tear gas and the paintball guns, and uh, we went at it until until they until they used force and we couldn't even breathe no more. And uh, that was my very first holiday in the county jail. Then I then uh, they separated me and my celly and sent me to a different day room. Now I landed in B-Pod. When I got to B-Pod, the Yavetto for that block was actually a... Uh, one of my main enemies growing up from the next city over, they're our biggest rival in sports, our biggest rival in our neighborhood, which is Beaumont. He's from Northside Beaumont, so it was Sickle from Northside Beaumont who had the pad right there. And uh, this was my first time learning and experiencing how it don't matter if your enemy's on the streets, no matter where you're from, what neighborhood, when you come to jail or you come to prison, you guys are all homies. Whatever beef in the past, unless it's like personal, family, whatever, I don't know, very, very personal. You, 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 I guess you could handle your business, but you're going to have something coming. For the most part, you put all that to the side. And uh, now I have his back and he has my back because the real enemies, as far as politics are going concerned, is uh, other races. And uh, we've got a bigger fight to fight. So I land there and uh, now I'm shaking my biggest enemy's hand who I used to try to kill when we were kids and he used to try to kill me when we were kids. And uh, come to find out, we end up being, I end up becoming closer to him than a lot of homies I ever met. Me and Sickle ended up becoming very, very close. And it's crazy how my worst enemy became my best friend at the time. And uh, I ended up moving in the cell with him and being cellies with him. And uh, he had the pad right there and he used to just lace me up on how to, how to run a pad, how everything, how everything works. Uh, showing me all the kites that come in and doing roll call and just literally lacing me up and uh, he had already been there for a few years fighting a hot one and uh, 
he was politicking tough right there when he was getting involved in the politics in the county. And uh, one day, uh, gang unit snatched his ass up, and uh, he don't come back. But before he left, he told me this is why I've been you up. He's like, I'm leaving the pad of you. So when he left, that was my first time having a pad and uh, running a pad. So I was, I don't know, I was, uh, I, it was an honor at the time. Like, damn, like, I haven't even been to prison yet. And uh, I over here got a pad. I have a good head on my shoulders. I don't use drugs. I don't fuck around with anything. I don't drink. I just keep a clear mind and, and just was just very focused on on the cause, you know, on politics. And, and I had the pad for a while, and uh, I got into a little situation uh, next door. A pod. All right, so. All right, so he had asked if I had a court body. If you need something, go out 17 to the homie that had the whole jail. And I told him, yeah, I got a court body to slide it right now. They're in day room. And he told me to wait till pill call. So, uh, till night day room and pill call. So, night day room pill call comes and he slides his line. You have 60 seconds remaining. I'm reeling in. I'm reeling in the dope. And I can see through the little window. It's a big ass ball, a big ass glove full of dope and fucking weed eyes. And it doesn't fit on the right side of the door. And I pull it in. And it, it, it just keeps hitting the door, boom, boom, boom. And there's nothing I can do. He doesn't even have the other end of the line. So when they open the doors for recall, I have to pull as hard as I can. There's nothing else I can do. I can't leave it there for the cops to find it when they walk. So I pulled as hard as I could, and it snapped on the line. And uh, all that got lost. And it came down. It came falling down on me. 